What's up guys, Virgil here for JRPG Central, and today we're going to be doing an unboxing of both of the Nino Kuni 2 Collector's Editions. On the left we have the North American Collector's Edition, and on the right we have the PAL Region King's Edition. Now both of these have different contents within, and are basically completely different editions. So in this video we're going to contrast and compare what is inside, as well as the overall build quality, and hopefully by the end of the video, give you guys a good indication of which one is more worth your money. So starting off with the front box art, as you can see on the King's Edition we have pretty much the exact same art as the art featured on the North American Collector's Edition. Moving around to the right side of the box, on the King's Edition the art just sort of continues on to the right side of the box. However, on the North American box, we have this nice little picture of the Higgledies surrounded around a table. Moving around to the left side of the box, we have that same image of the Higgledies surrounded around the table on the North American edition. However, on the King's edition, what originally looked like just Nino Kuni 2 spelt over and over, upon closer examination, you can see that it is the title of the game in a bunch of different languages, which is actually pretty cool. For the tops of the boxes, you can see that the North American Collector's Edition is actually numbered. So for this one, I have number 19,078 out of 25,000. However, the King's Edition isn't numbered whatsoever. And moving around to the back of the boxes, this is where you can see the main difference between each edition. And when these two were initially announced, this is what gave me the idea to get them both and kind of compare them for you guys. So for the North American Collector's Edition, you get the full game, Steelbook, a making of Blu-ray, the soundtrack on CD, some DLC along with the Season Pass, a Lofty Plush, a Papercraft 3D Kit, a Chibi Mechanical Rotating Diorama, and a 119-page art book. As for the King's Edition, you get the full game, a steelbook, making of Blu-ray, soundtrack on vinyl, the Season Pass, a pop-up vinyl sleeve, a rotating music box, and a 148-page art book. It's also worth noting that on the King's Edition box, there is a remote play supported symbol on the back. However, on the North American edition, that is non-existent. So I guess Vita Island is a little less dead over in the UK. Okay, so for the actual unboxing, we're going to be starting with the North American Collector's Edition. I also want to say for full transparency that these were not supplied to me by Bandai Namco. I bought these with my own money for the purpose of this video, so I hope you all enjoy. So for this one, I have already taken out the game to play. Uh, but other than that, I haven't touched anything inside. So, as I said before, you get the full Nino Kuni 2 game along with some Day 1 DLC, as well as a steelbook case with some great art on both the front and back. And on the inside, you get that music CD collection of Nino Kuni 2, as well as the making of Blu-ray. Moving on to the art book, I was immediately impressed at how huge this thing is. It may be paperback, but it's a hefty, hefty book and an enormous art book, one of the biggest I've seen. Here's some art of some of the mobs in the game as well as some of the character art and enemy art. Next up, we have the Lofty Plush, who is being contained in his cardboard cell. He's a cute little plush and has this really nice fur to him. It's almost like microfiber, where if you rub it up, it kind of changes color. It's a really nice feeling plush, honestly, for how tiny it is. Next up, we have uh, a, uh, a completely empty cardboard box. So, that's cool. After that, we have the 3D Papercraft display, though we'll have more on this later. Moving on to the main statue that this comes with because it's a collector's edition and of course it has to have a statue. I like this detail on the box where on the front and on the sides of the box, the chibis all kind of rotate to which side of the box that is being seen. I think that's a really nice touch. So as we crack into it, there are some instructions here on how to put the thing together. And I gotta say, there was a strong paint slash chemical smell that emanated out of this box that was terrible. It was just absolutely terrible. There's also a ton of tape uh, for this, but as we finally get it unwrapped, here you can see it's in two pieces, both the monster on top and then the actual diorama down below. Also, this thing is pretty light and cheap feeling, not really impressed with it. However, the actual monster that goes on top has a pretty good amount of heft to it. So I originally thought that that was it, but turns out that there were these little soldiers that were packed in the styrofoam hiding, basically. And these two have magnets on the bottom that you place onto the diorama, and once you give it a few twists, this is what you get. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Okay, so moving on to the papercraft display. This is usually the part where I would describe how I put the thing together and then show you guys what it looked like afterwards, except this thing is awful. My girlfriend and I spent over an hour trying to get this thing together, 
And after doing a quick Google search, turns out I'm not the only one who absolutely hates, hates, hates this thing. Um, I'm sure I've actually seen pictures of it completed and it looks rather cool. But for me, it's not worth the pain and the misery of putting it together. It's just frustrating because clearly there was zero thought given to how someone would actually put this together. They just made sure it would work, that it could technically be done, but as far as the actual ease of use of putting it together, there was no thought put into it. And here we have it. This is the Nino Kuni 2 North American Collector's Edition. This is everything that came in it, and to be perfectly honest, after actually unboxing everything, I was thoroughly, thoroughly disappointed in it. If you take out the game, which was $60, that would mean everything here minus the game is $140. And I'll leave it up to you guys to tell me if you think that everything you're seeing on screen is worth $140. Okay, and moving on to the King's Edition. Right away, I was much more impressed with the overall build quality of the box. It just kind of had a nicer feel to it. Alongside the right side of the box, you can see a nice little picture of Evan. And on the back side, you can see more art from some of the monsters from the game. And as we remove the lid, the first thing you'll see is the Sound of Nino Kuni 2 vinyl. This is such a cool edition. This is something I wish way more collector's editions did. Because if we're honest, how many times do you ever actually put in that soundtrack and listen to it? More often than not, it just sits in the game case, never to be touched. So having a record vinyl on soundtrack at least gives it a cooler purpose than just a CD that sits in the game case. And as you open up the vinyl sleeve, you see that it creates a nice little pop-up book type thing showing Roland, Evan, and Tani from the game. And once we actually take out the vinyl out of the sleeve, you can see that it is a gorgeous, gorgeous vinyl record of the soundtrack. Although I will say under closer examination, it turns out that it only has two tracks on it. So it doesn't have the entire soundtrack, which means that it's not just above and beyond better than the North American soundtrack, because at least with that, you do get the entire soundtrack. Moving on, we have the art book of the King's Edition, which is a beautiful hardback bound book that features, I believe I said 148 pages, and overall, I would say it is far better than the one in the North American box. Not only that it's a hardcover, but that it also has a better front and back, and it has more content in it. And you can see as I'm pulling this main statue out, which we'll get to later, that all of this had these little silk pull tabs on it, which is such a nice feature. In fact, the entire box is perfectly fitted for all the contents inside, which I think is a really nice touch. Here, of course, you can see the main game, as well as the still book it comes with. And as you can see, it is slightly different from the one we have in the North American Collector's Edition. Taking a look on the inside, we have what I would presume is the same making of Blu-ray, and where the music soundtrack went is empty, and instead, in this edition, we have these nice little postcards. Of course, no one's ever going to use these, but they are a cute edition. And here are a few shots of both the front, the spine, and the back of the still books for comparison. Moving on to the last piece is the same art that we've seen plenty of times now. And while it is smaller than the North American diorama, it's definitely going for a quality over quantity type thing, which is a theme I feel like this entire collector's edition has went with. And once you give the base a few twists, it plays a beautiful rendition of the main Nino Kuni theme. And that is it for the Nino Kuni 2 King's Edition. As I said before, I think this is certainly a quality over quantity type thing. And while there aren't quite as many things in this edition, I think it is above and beyond the better made edition and the better bang for your buck. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys. I hope you all enjoyed the unboxing. If you did, be sure to let me know with a thumbs up as it really helps the channel grow. And be sure to let me know in the comments down below exactly which collector's edition you got and which one you like more. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day, and I will catch you in the next video.